Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Airport noise complaints may be heavily weighted by just a few people. Textron Airland Scorpion Jet demonstrates weapon capabilities. AMA joins forces to help members obtain remote pilot certificates. I'm Brie Cross, it's October 24th, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. A new study released by the Makeda Center at George Mason University finds that most complaints about airport noise come only from a handful of people and that the balance between noise abatement and the economic benefits of an airport has been heavily tilted towards those who complain. After an evaluation of noise complaint data from a selection of U.S. airports to quantify opposition to airport noise, researchers say that the source of airport noise complaints is often highly concentrated in a few dedicated complainers. For example, the researchers cite data from 2015 that shows that 6,852 of the 8,760 complaints regarding Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport originated from one residence. That amounts to about 19 complaints per day from one individual, and the research indicated that this is not atypical at other airports. The researchers suggested that policymakers should be acutely aware of the distribution of calls before taking further action on airport noise. The Textron Airland privately developed Scorpion jet has successfully completed its first weapons exercise at White Sands Missile Range. The weapon system design, integration, and flight test coordination for all three weapon types were achieved in an impressive time span of less than three months. All weapon types performed flawlessly and included Hydra 70 unguided 2 and 3 4 inch rockets, BAE Systems Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, and the AGM 114F Hellfire missiles. The first Scorpion prototype continues its flight test program, while the first flight of the first production conforming Scorpion is expected soon. Textron Airland says the Scorpion is built to excel in many roles, including intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, close air support, armed reconnaissance, marine time and border patrol, and jet training missions. After the break, AMA works in partnership with UAV Ground School. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Academy of Model Aeronautics announced they have joined in partnership with UAV Ground School to offer Academy members a $75 discount towards FAA Part 107 test preparation. The new FAA Part 107 regulations cover the non-hobby and non-recreational use of small unmanned aerial systems. These regulations require that anyone operating a SUAS for other than hobby and recreational purposes must hold a remote pilot certificate. According to the AMA, passing the FAA knowledge test and becoming an FAA certificated operator gives graduates a major leg up as commercial SUAS uses continue to explode. AMA Executive Director Dave Mathewson said in part, quote, UAV Ground School, produced by Gold Seal, is an excellent online resource for UAV operators preparing for the FAA Part 107 Remote Pilot Knowledge Test, and it's especially useful for AMA members who want to increase their aviation knowledge. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of While at EAA Airventure 2016, we saw a new home-built design that is on the leading edge of triple airfoil technology. Watch the video and you'll see what we mean. Search Take Flight with Commuter Craft on YouTube. 
After these messages, EAA Spirit of Aviation Mobile Experience to debut at MBAA. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. EAA Spirit of Aviation Mobile Experience Trailer is bringing EAA's mission and passion for aviation to the MBAA Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition in Orlando next week. It is designed to bring the EAA brand to aviation enthusiasts through hands-on, member-tested activities. A Bell 429 helicopter is featured in this season's Red Bull TV series, The Horn. The Red Bull TV six-part original docuseries is shot through the first responder's eyes and set in the shadows of the most treacherous terrain of Switzerland's Matterhorn Mountain. Two pilots from Greenville, South Carolina have been presented with the FAA's Wright Brothers Master Pilot Award. David Allen Jr. and Gerald Gage received the prestigious award due to their record of over 50 years of safe flying. General Atomics announced that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Customs and Border Protection now has automatic takeoff and landing capability in their Predator B Guardian aircraft fleet. This system is designed to increase safety and efficiency of air crews. DARPA and the Air Force have developed a telescope that provides space situational awareness and is helping prevent potential collisions with satellites or planet Earth. The ownership and operation has now been transferred to the U.S. Air Force Space Command to be operated in Western Australia. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Based on images from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, shown on GeekWire.com, there is a smoking hole on Mars that is the final location of the European Space Agency's Schiaparelli Mars Lander. In other words, the Schiaparelli probe did indeed bite the Martian dust. According to the report, images of the planned landing area for the probe clearly show before and after pictures of a black spot that appears to be about 50 feet wide and 130 feet long. The space agency is quoted as saying, This is interpreted as arising from the impact of the Schiaparelli module itself falling a much longer freefall than planned after the thrusters were switched off prematurely. In addition to what appears to be the crash site, a bright spot on the surface has also appeared about one half mile south of the suspected impact site that is thought to be the probe re-entry parachute. The European Space Agency is planning to land a Mars rover on the planet in the year 2020. Careful examination of what occurred with the failed landing of the probe will be factored into this next ambitious project. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.